Hey everyone, welcome back. This is a long one. You probably saw in my community post that I was struggling to farm enough Tenet Spearxes with my horrible RNG. It took me 7 of them to get my Magnetic Spearx to 60%. What I didn't tell you, and one of the reasons I missed yesterday's upload, is actually I farmed up 2 60% Spearxes. That's right, 2. The thing is, Tenet Spearx is a very, very unique weapon. It has a unique combination of traits and stats we have actually never seen before. The closest comparison I can give is the Kuva Seer, but it still isn't the same. There are many interesting ways to play it, and you will probably learn a couple of unexpected things in this video like I did. But first, let's go over this weapon. Tenet Spearx is an entirely new weapon that came with the Sisters of Parvos update. You can pick it up from vanquishing your sister Lich. What will be immediately apparent is it appears to be the direct successor of Kuva Seer in raw stats. Its fire rate is barely slower, and it has one less shot in the magazine. Its reload is also 0.1 seconds slower, but it does have a passive for that. It has the same base damage as the Kuva Seer, but both the main shot and explosion now have heat, while the Kuva Seer only has corrosive on the explosion itself and standard IPS on the shot. What sets Spirix apart at first glance is the higher critical chance, higher critical damage, and higher status chance. Additionally, this status chance is so high it actually lets it close in on new breakpoints. Both guns are projectile weapons, and they also currently don't work with Galvanized Shot, the pistol version of Condition Overload. However, one thing the UI doesn't tell you is that Spirix is forced impact on its main shot. That alone should tell you something and why it's better than the Kuva Seer. It is a perfect candidate for hemorrhage, giving you a 70% chance of slash procs on the main shot regardless of status or crits, but actually it goes a lot deeper than this. This pistol currently has the highest shared status and critical chance of any secondary in the game. It also came out with the Sisters of Parvos mainline that introduced the Galvanized mods, which are a game changer. Let's step back for a second. You may remember when the Hemorrhage and Internal Bleeding mods first came out, some really hot picks for the rifles included Kuva Chakur, Daikyu, and Queller. Each of these primaries have forced impact procs, meaning they had extremely strong slash potential. Tenet Spearx is the most similar to Kuva Chakur in this aspect. Do you remember when people were speculating if Kuva Chakur was worth getting as plus impact as the elemental bonus instead of plus toxin or plus heat? The reason was that plus impact could proc hemorrhage again. Well, it turns out that doesn't work, because you can only proc hemorrhage once per damage instance. Meaning a single hit from a forced impact proc will not be able to proc slash from pure status again, as well as the forced impact proc. Additionally, Kuva Chakur fires too slow to really be able to take advantage of this properly in an AoE sense, and a slow firing weapon was not good for applying consistent status, especially with a super low multi shot rifle mod had in Split Chamber. Fast forward to Tenet Spearx. Not only does Barrel Diffusion give more multi shot than Split Chamber, but we actually have Galvanized Diffusion now, which caps out at 230% multi shot in comparison to the original Split Chamber at 90. That is 1.9 bullets versus 3.3, or nearly double the amount of hits. Tenet Spearx only applies forced impacts on the shot itself, meaning hemorrhage never procs on the explosion, unlike Chakur. This means the weapon actually is slashing with only half its damage from the main shot, and hemorrhage would not only give it both the potential to slash from the explosion for the full damage, but also do AoE slash finally. This is a very quick demonstration of what I'm talking about. You proc AoE Viral on your standard Spearx build, but the only target that is really taking damage is the one you're directly hitting. You cannot put punch through on this weapon to hit more enemies with the main shot because it will prevent the AoE from triggering, thus reducing your priming potential. This makes the standard Spearx basically a middle ground between Kuvasir and Epitaph. A decent primer and better damage than Kuvasir that can do a lot of damage already without having to resort to the Allfire of Epitaph, but completely useless for AoE applications. This is where you are wrong, and this is where I was wrong too. The standard build makes good use of Spyrex's sky high status to spread viral, but you can actually use this to consistently spread impact procs instead if you go for a impact bonus stat. The higher fire rate of Spyrex makes it much more comfortable and easier to apply impact status than Chakr. It also has significantly higher status, meaning the massively increased multi-shot we now have will scale much better at applying status as well than we originally thought on Chakr. Finally, pistols have access to better mods than primaries in general, meaning better crit chance, better crit damage, and more potential for impact focused builds, such as Saxum Spittle, a plus impact plus status chance mod for secondaries that you can use to fix the elemental waiting, that only has a melee variant and no primary counterpart. There is one last thing to consider. High damage single target weapons such as Spearx and Epitaph have a form of inconsistency known as overkill. You're overcompensating damage into single targets beyond what is required to kill them due to the nature of the weapon. 
When you have AoE weapons, generally this requires a loss of damage to improve the AoE capability such that things take longer to kill, but if you can boost the damage of the weapon high enough, the damage loss to overkill on a single target becomes still enough to redistribute into AoE setups and kill without a noticeable damage loss. Or so in theory. The thing is, in Warframe, we have rarely ever had a weapon that uses one fire mode that can function both as a single target or AoE, but not interchangeably optimally, at once. So far in recent memory, Tenet Spirex is the only one. First, I want to show you what this weapon can do on a standard build. The reason I have chosen Magnetic as the progenitor element is due to the innate heat on this weapon. The order of elemental combination starts with your modded elements, any innate elements, and finally the progenitor element last. This means it is a waste to take Toxin Progenitor to save a slot for Viral, because the innate heat will always combine before Toxin. This means you still have to actually use both Toxin and Cold Mods to create Viral, so Toxin Spirex is out of the question. The other choice is Heat, but the weapon already has innate heat, and while Viral Heat is strong, Spirex is not a beam, meaning while it does apply a lot of status, it pales in comparison to beams and cannot use Heat as the primary damage source through status effects. Rather, Heat will just function as another form of CC and armor strip on the build. The other elements, quite honestly, suck. This isn't a beam weapon again, so Electric is out of the question, because it is even weaker than Heat except in crowds, when you can pile on a lot of procs instantly. Cold is no no-go, because that's just a useless progenitor. This leaves Impact, which I'm covering after this, Radiation, and Magnetic. Why not Radiation, you may ask? Because no matter how you use this weapon, it is still a slash gun, meaning raw damage isn't as important. It also already has very high base damage, meaning fodder will die instantly regardless of the element you use. So, why Magnetic? You don't need raw damage against shields, right? Well, here's the thing. Many people forget that the status effect of Magnetic is identical to Viral, but for shields instead. Magnetic boosts your damage dealt to shields, including Slash. This lets Slash cut through shields just as quickly as health. While Corpus weren't that much of an issue in the past, we're continuously getting more Corpus content, and DE is releasing more and more problematic Corpus enemies. Normally I would mod Toxin, but as we already explained, it is very difficult to get Toxin alone on Spirex because of the innate heat. So going for Magnetic, which allows you to have both Viral and Magnetic on the same build to boost your Slash Frocks against any faction no matter what, is the best choice on a standard Spirex build. Additionally, choosing a secondary element as a progenitor means it will always stand alone and not combine with your other single primary elements. This is important for when Galvanize Shot is fixed, because it will count as one additional status effect. If I took Heat, I would have no extra elements. If I took Toxin, it would just combine with Heat or my modded elements. Once Galvanized Shot is fixed, it will actually replace Hornet Strike on this build. This is because our setup spreads 3 elements in an AoE for 360% extra bonus damage, or 1.5 times as strong as Hornet Strike while also improving our status chance further. On the actual target we shoot directly, we will produce 5 elements and a slash procs for a total of 6, or an extra 720% base damage on the enemy we're shooting directly. It's no contest compared to Hornet Strike. But for the time being, Hornet Strike remains on this build. The rest is just a standard viral hemorrhage setup with our fancy galvanized multi-shot accompanying it. The critical chance isn't high enough for Creeping Bullseye to make a noticeable difference, whereas the fire rate is already on the slow side, so I don't want to take that penalty. For this reason, we're sticking with Prime Pistol Gambit. The Bane is where your massive firepower to delete single enemies will come from because it double dips Slash while also letting you prime your surroundings. This weapon has a 2.4 second reload, so I find Eject Magazine is extremely porn on this pistol to help that out while you're using your other weapons. If you accompany this with a synth set for another 10% holster reload, this weapon will fully reload after just 3 seconds of not using it. What I will say though is if you want to use this weapon to its full extent, you have to use a grouping CC ability so you can make use of the AoE priming. Preferably in Snare, but Larva works as well. And Snare does let you land the headshots though. This will inflate your slash multiplier faster and let you stack Galvanize Diffusion sooner. These headshots are also super important to stack the reload passive, which can cut down the reload all the way to about 1.5 seconds. You can even stack secondary Merciless on top of this for the extra 30% reload to bring it down even further. Once you ensnare, you land the first shot at the head and then you are free to spray away. That was without the galvanized multi-shot stacked, so now let's try it again. So you see, it takes about 1.5 to 2 magazines to clear this crowd. I even brought Panzer, as there isn't that much of other options these days after the Helios Gladiator nerf. 
Notice how in single enemies, I seem to still be overkilling once Viral ramps up. The slash ticks aren't even really needed here, half of them are dying instantly from the shot. While this is useful for endurance when things get tankier, remember this is a single target gun, so you will still only be killing one thing at a time. The other important thing I haven't mentioned is this build is without secondary Merciless. I actually left this off intentionally, so let's put it on and try it again. The reload now is much better and comfier to handle. If you stack this with frame buffs as well, it might even be unnoticeable. This time I'm just going to skip to the test where I have Galvanized Multishot already stacked. Okay, so you see while I'm priming the enemies around me. Well, the slash in this test is nearly useless now since each heavy gunner is basically dying to a single shot instantly before the slash ever kicks in. Keep this in mind. And remember, we don't even have Galvanize shot on the build yet, which would give us an extra 720% damage on a single target enemy on this build instead of 220% from Hornet Strike. That's a full 500% base damage missing. So this weapon has a ton of potential, just like Epitaph, particularly because of the sheer amount of status it is using, and you can do it all while shooting and not resorting to the all fire like Epitaph has to. This weapon is also capable of spreading 6 status effects just like Epitaph. And even though Epitaph still hits slightly harder, it's clearly apparent both of these weapons overkill on single targets and it's mostly irrelevant at this point which one hits harder. This is why Tenet Spearx is special. Let's take a look at that impact build, shall we? First thing you'll notice is that, as expected, there are no elements on the build. We have swapped off the 260-60 viral mods for Saxum Spittle, a 90% impact, 60% status mod, and Magnum Force. This build will also run Galvanized Shot once it is patched and will be slotted over the Magnum Force. While this build is only capable of producing 4 status effects, we are still running Panzer for viral, so that's our 5th status. This means Galvanized Shot will still be able to give 600% extra base damage once it's patched. We're also able to keep Hornet Strike still on the build even after Galvanized Shot is patched to replace Magnum Forest for even more base damage. The rest of the build is the same, but I want you to take a look at something. Look at the radial damage stats. Impact has a 53.3% total weight here. 70% of these impact procs will convert into slash, meaning the AoE can proc slash 37.3% of the time, assuming you proc slash. Actually, let's take a look at status chance. Right now it's 64%, right? Well, once Galvanized Shot is patched and I slot this in, it will be 96% chance. At 96% status, which means almost every single shot procs something. This means 35.8% of all bullets shot will produce slash. This weapon has 3.3 multi-shot once fully stacked and a fire rate of 2.33. This means the AoE will be applying on average 2.75 slash procs to every enemy within range of the AoE per second. That's pretty good, right? But that isn't all. We still have the primary mode of fire. The primary mode has an impact weight here of 72.7%. It has a 70% chance of proccing slash from hemorrhage due to forced impact, but if it doesn't proc, out of that remaining 30%, 14.65% of the time, it will still proc slash due to the actual impact weight of the weapon. This means every single time you shoot the primary fire of this build, each bullet direct hit has a 84.65% chance of proccing slash. What does this mean? It means that a direct hit with 3.3 multi-shot and 2.33 fire rate produces 6.5 procs of slash per second. And this is on top of the 2.75 AoE procs of slash. To prove this, I'm going to shoot this enemy 3 times quickly. You generally can't shoot at exactly 2.33 fire rate manually, so I'm giving this some lenience. That's why we shoot 3 times. I'm expecting 6 to 8 slash procs here, and this is exactly what we see. Clearly the single target damage is still doing well even though we're not building for it specifically anymore. Now if I group them together, you can see it spreads a ton of slash. I'm basically killing them just as fast or even faster than the magnetic viral build, but remember what I talked about overkill? What do you think happens if I put secondary merciless on? The magnetic viral build still has to shoot at least once per enemy to kill them no matter how high your damage is because the AoE can't proc slash and thus can't kill enemies, whereas this build hits everything at once, so let's try that out. See, this is where the AoE slash build pulls ahead, and you can take the best advantage of it with grouping abilities with the best contender being in snare. This is just a showing of adding 360% base damage to the build. 
once galvanized shot and the other gun condition overload mods are fixed. The gap between single target magnetic viral setup on Spearx versus the AoE impact slash will get even larger because we'll be gaining 600% or 720 base damage from the mod. The AoE slash build will be able to kill all of these enemies in 1-2 to two shots most likely, whereas the magnetic viral setup will still have to shoot every single enemy once. This is what I wanted to show you today. I believe in the foreseeable future, Tenet Spirix is going to become our strongest pistol in the game for DPS. It isn't a Brahma, or Tetra, or Zar, or Tonkor, but the thing is we don't have any secondaries like that in the pistol slot. This thing is literally going to become a pocket Brahma for grouped enemies. It has ridiculous DPS potential for the amount of damage and status it outputs for 2.33 fire rate with extreme rates of slash procs. Watch out for this gun and I would strongly recommend picking it up to play with in the future once Galvanize Shot is fixed. The AoE build will most likely one-shot every single conventional enemy you face in Steel Path. The two elements you want depend on how you want to build it and these are magnetic or impact. This is definitely an underdog I think people are sleeping on. The amount of status means you can also use it as a makeshift primer for melee if you so chose. But generally if you shoot something with this gun on a full build, it's probably gonna die before you can do any meaningful damage to it with melee. If this is your first time watching, feel free to leave a like or better yet subscribe. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. 79.5% of you are not subscribed. I'm trying my best to get you new information out always as soon as possible like I've done with covering the Tempestari and the Sisters of Parvos updates. Stick around if you want to see interesting memes and builds on a nearly daily basis. I'm also preparing to get you more information out, especially once we get more details on the new war. You don't want to miss out on any of that, do you? That'll be it for this video. Thank you all for watching, and see you all next time.